Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Uh, Nigel! I think I see some flaws in your plan! Nonsense. We need to get a superhero to guest star on the podcast, right? So what's the best way to get their attention? Mortal danger? Mortal danger. So Tom, you pretend like you're falling from this building, a hero comes and saves you, and boom! We ask him to be on the show. I get that, but does it have to be from this high up? With Jesus Christ, stop being such a wuss. It's gotta look legitimate. Look, if anything happens, the bungee cord will catch you. You're just gonna fall a few feet, boing, boing, boing. You're safe. That's it. You're in yeah. no danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 feet tops. What? 15 feet. He said 15 feet tops. Trust me. I'm numbers. If you say so. Come on, Tom. They tell me you're a man of true grit. Who <laughs> said that? What does sandpaper have to do with this? It means true resolve, determination, or strength of character. Yeah, that. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> Strength of character, yeah, that's you. Yeah, <laughs> that. You're right. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. That's the spirit. Now, action. <clears throat> oh no, our friend is about to fall. Won't somebody please save him? Now go, go, top. Yeah. <laughs> it was really 50 feet, right? Yeah, it's 50 feet. Wait, wait, what about oh! Just checking. Hey. I think there's a reason they don't bungee jump off buildings. Y'all right down there, buddy? Do you see anyone yet? Nothing yet. Must not have been far enough, you know, downwards. Uh, okay, new plan. Josh, I need you to go get that costume that we made earlier this week. Uh-huh. And- guys! Can we just watch a movie, guys? Movie? Yeah, sure. I'm getting bored. Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. We're taking Jimmy Stewart to the shootest. John Wayne to True Grit. Robert Duvall to Days of Thunder. Tom Cruise to The Mummy. Russell Crowe to The Quick and the Dead. Gene Hackman to Superman. Fly into the hero's journey with Tom, Dan, and Josh and race faster than a speeding bullet towards the superhero films of superhero films, Superman! You will believe that a fire pit can fly! Good evening, Bucks and listeners, and welcome back to another episode of The Fire Pit. I'm Tom, hero name Funny Moon, and tonight we are back in action and flying high on the hero's journey. On our way to 1978 Superman, starring the immortal Christopher Reeve. But first, we need to get back on our horse and ride out to our second stop on the journey. And per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last movie and moved them to this one. Now, Now, to tell tell us what we're we're watching watching and who we're we're watching, watching. I send things over to Dan. Thank you, Tom. I'm Dan, hero name Enforcer. Enforcer. That's such a cool name. And last week, we watched John Wayne have a chat with Jimmy Stewart. Then he talked to Ron Howard. Then he talked to Lauren Bacall. And then he went and had a chat with Scatman Crothers. And he circled back and kept doing that and talking to all of them again. Two hours and change later, we finally got a shootout in a movie called The Shootist. It was, well, it was John Wayne's last picture, so let's just leave it at that. Anyways, tonight, we will see the Duke in the role that won him an Oscar. 1969's True Grit, a True classic Western made in the golden age of Westerns in Hollywood. Now to give us a rundown on the film, I'll send things over to Numbers. Thank you, Dan. Numbers Numbers here. here. Secret Secret identity, identity, Josh. Josh. This is the last last time time we let time we let Dan pick our superhero names. And as he mentioned before, we are watching True Grit, the original, starring John Wayne, Glenn Campbell, Jeff Coffey, and Dennis Hopper, 
and Robert Duvall. This is the film that won John Wayne his only Academy Award for Best Actor, as said five million times on this podcast. <laughs> it is considered a classic film, one of Wayne's best, and there was a remake in 2010 starring Jeff Bridges taking Wayne's role of Rooster Cockburn. Now, this movie was originally released in June 12th, 1969, has a runtime of about 128 minutes, had a budget of estimated around 8 to $12 million, and had a box office return of $31.1 million. And it was re-released on its 50th year anniversary and pulled in 276000 That was back in 2019. Years ago. Um, it has a Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> score of 89% and an IMDb score of 7.5 out of 10. That low? Wow. I honestly That's... don't think 7.5 is a bad rating for a film, considering, like, Dark Knight gets, like, an 8.9. Yeah, but this is, like, one of John Wayne's films. This is one of those films you think of when you think John Wayne. So I would have figured it'd be a lot higher than that. It could also be one of those situations where um, when the remake came out, a lot of younger audiences at the time, I mean, that was 10 years ago, they went and watched it and with modern day expectations and then they realized it was a very boring film, so they re- it basically got review bombed. Uh, that, that wouldn't surprise me. Darn kids and their modern expectations. Yeah, as we say in multiple times again, uh, they're used to the ADHD roller coaster that is modern cinema. Uh, <laughs> but anywho, Tom, what are you expecting out of this film? Have you seen this before? I have not seen this version, except for like the famous, you know, fill your hands, you son of a bitch scene. But that's because whenever they play remembering John Wayne stuff or best of John Wayne, they always show that clip. I have seen the remake and that was excellent. I thought Jeff Bridges and them did an amazing job on that film. Uh, This one, of course, more loosely adapted from the book as opposed to the remake, which followed it far closer. Not necessarily a bad thing. We're talking 1960s, especially late 1960s. So I'm sure they had to cut a few things out from the book. I won't spoil too much about what they probably did or did not versus what they kept in the remake. But I never liked westerns as a kid so whenever my dad would have this on i always just ignored it and now that i'm an adult i actually kind of like westerns a little bit more and it's going to be great to see some of these actors i mean john wayne come on the er example of cowboys we saw him in the last film it'll be nice to see him in a good john wayne film so i'm looking forward to that this is one of robert duvall's earlier films before he went on to do apocalypse now and the godfather uh Kim Darby, who was a kid actress for a while and also played Miri in the Star Trek episode, Miri, the Planet of Kids. So a little geek thing there. And this is the premiere of Dollar, John Wayne's horse. This is where he got the horse. So seeing that one's good. This film was written by Mark Carit Roberts, who was a 30-year veteran. And the director had pretty good repertoire under his belt so going into this i'm expecting solid writing solid editing solid directing good acting and hey this thing won john wayne an oscar i'm curious to see what the duke brought that they said yep after 30 years of playing cowboys you finally got it right dude but what about you nigel how are you going into this film well, I've seen this movie a couple of times. It's it was my dad and my grandfather's like one of their favorite films ever. So it was almost always on in some capacity in my house, especially if dad was flipping channels and stumbled on this one on either like AMC or Turner Classic Movies or something like that. The, the channel stopped changing at that point. He would just finish the movie no matter what scene it was on. So I've seen this movie quite a few times and I love it. I love this one. I love the remake as well. I thought the remake did one or two things better than the original. Mostly the girl in the remake is much more tolerable than she is in this one. So, uh, but I won't spoil too much. Um, I don't know what to say I'm expecting. I already love the movie, I guess. Last week we watched John Wayne give a good performance in a bad movie. I'm kind of looking forward to watching John Wayne give his best performance or one of his best performances in a good movie. This is one of those movies that just kind of reminds you that John Wayne could act. He was a good actor. 
Yeah, he played mostly cowboys, but in soldiers. But when he got a good script and a good story, good direction, he could act. And this is one of those movies. This is right up there with The Quiet Man and Rio Bravo and McClintock. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Like I said, last week we watched a good John Wayne performance in a bad movie. This time we're going to see a good John Wayne performance in a good movie. So I'm really looking forward to that. What about you, Josh? Well, my number one uh, expectation, well, I guess one thing I'm looking forward to is finally, after five weeks, getting out of movies that came out before 1970. <clears throat> Good start. Good start. I mean, because it was uh, five weeks ago we started watching Cool Hand Luke, which was 67. Since then, we've done a 1967, a 1965, a 1939, a 1976, and now a 1969 movie. Okay, so let me re-amend that. Pre-1980 movies. But still, we've watched a lot of old movies lately. I'm not totally hating on that but I am a little. Do you guys know my feelings on Westerns? I've only seen exactly one John Wayne film. If you want to know my thoughts on that, listen to last week's episode. <laughs> I want to preface my expectations with this. I changed up my typicalness watching this time around. Normally, I would not watch a remake, especially when I'm coming up on watching the original. I watched the remake this week. First time I'd ever seen it. You know, but in my life, I've probably seen five Western films, and this includes the True Grit remake. Okay, probably not five, but you know what I mean. Does Serenity count? No, uh, it's a space Western, so maybe. I mean, are you are you counting Wild Wild West in that? No. Yes. No one's counting Wild Wild I West. Am. That's not a Western. That's a tragedy. I mean, uh, to be honest, Firefly is about as realistic a Western as wild wild west is so yeah i guess why not okay sure okay so yes i am but uh so so i did watch the remake i liked the remake so i'm i'm honestly looking forward to watching the original now my expectations are fairly high especially given that john wayne won the oscar and like i said i really like Haley steinfeld's uh performance in the remake but i've learned that the what's her name kim darby in the original she is probably one of the lows in the original like i read a lot of the people did not like her uh, performance but uh i'm looking forward to the movie i've got fairly high expectations i have done a lot of research on reviews this week so um i know what to expect on it i should say but yeah i would have to say my expectations are fairly high i just hope it's better than last week's movie which was terrible don't watch the shootist but listen to our episode that's the real tragedy tom is the fact that we had to watch the shootist last week Yes, you are not wrong on that one, Josh. Whew. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. Incidentally, I was looking it up just for uh, out of curiosity to see who was the Academies for 1969 guys. Holy shit, were there a lot of good movies? We had Bullet, 2001: A Space Odyssey. Came you got to look 19- at 1970 because this movie came out in 1969. Oh, oh. Oscars. Actually, here. it was Easy Riders. Midnight Cowboy and True Grit were the really big movies. Hello, Dolly came out that year, too, but it won a couple Oscars for Best Musical. Okay, 1970. All right, yeah, it wasn't as big a deal as 1969. That one had some films, but I'm impressed. John Wayne won Best Actor against Dustin Hoffman and John Voight for Midnight Cowboy. Have you guys seen that film? We were actually talking about it before you got on, you know, in the hour and a half we had. (laughs) And what did you say about the film, Josh? I hadn't seen it. Oh, such a classic film. I think think it's overrated as a classic. I think it's a good movie. It's always get put in those lists of best movies of all time. And it's like, no. Really? It's a good movie. Don't get me wrong. It's just not one of the best ever, you know? Like, I think Dustin, I think, Dustin Hoffman was like way better in oh uh, uh, the graduate. Okay. And I don't know. Midnight Cowboy, it's an incredibly depressing film. Um yeah. It's a, one of those movies about with John Voight and I'm sorry, you can say what you want about John Voight as far as his political affiliations go and all that but mm, he can act. Guy's an actor. Oh yeah, especially in this. Well, I'm going to save some more talk about um, Midnight Cowboy if and when we ever get to Midnight Cowboy, but I think that's going to add to my watching here. It's like Okay, John Wayne, you beat out John Voight and Dustin Hoffman in what is one of my personal favorite films from this generation. So 
let's see what you got, buddy. But like I said, you know, I have read a lot of reviews on uh, this movie this week. Dan, do you know why I've been reading a lot of reviews for the uh, movie this week? Because you have the quiz? I have the quiz. Yay, I got the answer right. That's a point, right? <laughs> no, no, no. But all I can say is you guys are in for a treat tonight. Oh, no. Okay, so I totally didn't almost steal this idea from Dan, who almost totally stole the idea from me. So you can say it's an original idea because I did it first. So uh, similar oh, to... Oh, God, I know what you did. Oh, so God. similar to last quiz that I did, I'm going to be reading you an IMDb review. But you have to tell me if it's from the original 1969 True Grit or the 2010 remake. Oh. Oh. So there will be five questions, and ties will be determined by guessing the review score. But do note, I've got ten questions locked and loaded. I'm going to be picking at random each question if it's going to be the remake or the original. There's still five questions, but I'll be picking one or the other at random. So, Tom... Since you were the gracious loser last week, Dan gets to go first. <laughs> awesome. I wish you could see my face right now because... Mm. <laughs> Nigel? Yes? Here is the line out of the review. All in all, these two characters, actors, were the wrong, didn't work. Made the movie a pain to watch. Is this from the remake or the original? I'm going to say the remake. Thompson? I'm going to say the original. That is out, that question. Yes, that one was painful. Um, that was from the original. So Tom <gasps> got that point. Woo! I didn't think that was going to be right. Holy shit. All right, Tom. So you get to answer the first one this time. Although with its comedic moments, the storyline doesn't ring true. Comedic moments ring true. I'm going to have to say the original. Nigel? Uh, I'm going to say the remake again. And it was the original. Wow. Ha. Ha. I thought the original, I thought the remake had more comedic moments than the original, but okay. Well, I know the original I didn't write the reviews. That was a 6 out of 10 rating, by the way. The first question was a uh, 1 out of 10 rating. I kind of guessed that one. Yeah. Nigel, third question is yours. Okay. True Grit is a classically made conventional Western whose brilliantly raw cinematography transports the audience to the dusty plains of the Old West, a land of revenge, passion, and grit. Is that from the remake or the original? I've got to get one of these right. i got to say it's the remake again. Thompson? <laughs> I love that you're sticking to your guns here, Nigel. I'm going to... You know what? I'm going to say the same thing as Nigel. I say it's the remake. You are both correct. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> for the tiebreaker on this question... Okay. Dan, what score did this person give this movie? Okay, can you read the review again? True Grit is a classically made conventional western whose brilliantly raw cinematography transports the audience to the dusty plains of the Old West, a land of revenge, passion, and grit. Can you use it in a sentence? Yes, I can, <laughs> but I won't. <laughs> no, it's... Uh... I will say 8 out of 10. Now, is this, a, is this a case where if we whoever gets it closest gets the point? Yes. Uh, it's I'm just gonna, a tiebreaker. I say, yeah, I think Nigel's got it on the money, but I'm going to say 9. Oof, it was an 8 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that felt like an 8. So. so right now the score is 2 to 1, Tom's favor. Question number 4 goes to Tom. I know this movie carries with it a great deal of sentimental allegiance, but unfortunately on its own merits, it is an allegiance that this production just has not earned. Oh, I'm going to have to say the remake. Now I, I will say the original. And that one goes to Dan. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. So it is all tied up. So, Nigel. All right. There isn't a false note in this film. Charles Portis' book of the same name is practically adapted verbatim to the screen. This is the purest book to movie transfer I've yet seen, and this assures its success. I'm gonna say the remake, because like, yeah, I'm I, I, I'm pretty sure it's the remake. Uh, the, the thing with the note throws me off because there was musical numbers in the original, thanks to Glenn Campbell. But yeah, I'm gonna have to say remake as well. Oof, you are both wrong. That was from the original. 
Damn it! I knew it! As soon as he said note, I should have went with my gut. Damn it. Damn it, I could have swore it was the remake. The remake's closer to the book. Tom even said it in the initial intro. Oh, well. Hey, I, did, I didn't write the review, but that uh, review was from February 1999. It was a 10 out of 10, by the way. Damn it. If we know the date, obviously. Okay, okay. Still tied up. All right, so it's two to two. I did get a tiebreaker on this one. Okay. So, uh, who's this one? Tom's? Yes. Actually, I'm going to flip it. Call it heads or tails, Tom. Heads or tails. Call one of them. Tails. It's tails. I know John Wayne is only playing John Wayne. However, he does it very well. <laughs> oh, mmm. 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 Is this a. Oh, this might be a trick question. Oh. Oh my god. Because I can almost hear the rest of that review where they're talking about. But. I'm going to go against my grit and say remake. Nigel? And I will go against trying to find the zebras while I can hear the hoof prints. So I will say the original. It is in fact the remake. I wow. knew it! Yes! That was one of those liar questions. Ha 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 ha! So that puts it at Tom 3 to Nigel's 2. Ooh. No losing streak for me this time around. Boom, baby! I'm back on top. I'm back in the saddle again. He should lose a point for that. He does. It's too late. Up. I've already been declared. It's mine. It's and mine. And he lost another point. Dan's got it next week. Bullshit. Good job, Tom. Good nice job, try. Tom. Nice try, guys. Oh, hang on, guys. Hang on. It says right here, Tom, play the music. Partners, and welcome back to another spur spinning episode of the Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and deputy marshal, Tom. I saddle up the horses because we're riding off after them Duke boys for leaving a $2 tip for a $50 meal. Scoundrels! And thank you for joining back with us as we fly into the hero's journey. Blazing the trail from here all the way to Superman. Now, we've shot our way out of that saloon, and we're ready to go deep into that there scenery porn. Speaking of porn, what say we take a listen at some ads that the team has in store? Hello, and welcome to the Fire Pit Podcast. I'm Josh. And I'm Dan. And I'm Tom. And we're just three guys from Ohio who like to hang out, sit around, and watch movies. Then one day, we found ourselves asking, huh, what's more fun than watching movies? Talking, Talking about, about them. them. <laughs> <laughs> so, every six weeks, we pick a film. Wait, guys, why are we doing this? It's a commercial, right? That's what I thought. Yeah, but on the podcast, like, seriously, they're already listening to it, like, like right now. Okay, so what are you getting at? You got a better idea? Of course. Buy a computer for at Rob's Custom PCs. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this podcast now. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I'd certainly give them the old 35 episode try if you catch my meaning. But if you don't catch my meaning and you want to, or if you just want us to talk about your products for a change, or just want to talk to us about something private like, then feel free to shoot us a line at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just put fire pit in the subject line, as well as the purpose of your communication, and tell us what you have. Whether it's for an ad, a recommendation for a path or a destination, comments or corrections, or just getting something heavy off of your chest. And on my honor, as a marshal, we will surely read every last word and then give you zero response. Think nothing of it. We're just doing our jobs. That email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. K 
capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. <laughs> Old Euro here is picking up a scent of something. That must mean it's time to get back to the podcast. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. <laughs> And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. Here we see a rooster cockburn with zero fucks. Oh, this is a really nice farm. Let's just stay here, guys. Nope. These transitions are hurting me. You should take the train. It's uh, too long of a ride. And he says it's just 70 miles a day or two. <laughs> 70 miles is like a couple of hours here. I'm glad we don't live in these times. I'm loving that the big town like thing is watching a bunch of people get hung. Some kids selling popcorn. Well, you know, there wasn't much to do before the internet. And if, if we've watched any of these old movies that take place before the internet, that proves it. If Josh just recently watched the remake, he's already spotting a major difference in the opening. Like, for one, Tom Chaney didn't give the dad a hand job when he died. Just like those Chaneys always shooting their friends. <laughs> okay, that, that was good. Thank you, thank you. And there's our boy. Oh, All right, John will... Wayne, show me an Academy Award winning performance. Not impressed so far. Well, this is his first scene, Josh. I gave him two words. I'm not impressed. What's your opinion of a federal marshal called Mr. Cockburn? He loves to pull a cork, I know that. What? Uh, is that wait. a sex thing? What? The best time for you to nail roosters would be tomorrow. Ha! <laughs> not that kind of nail, Dan. It was legal back then. Yeah, she was a woman. She was of childbearing age. 1980s well, marriage material is 2020s pedophile material. I mean, 1880s marriage material. 1980s was pretty much illegal to marry a 13-year-old and have kids with her. I may have been off by 100 years. <laughs> oh, for those playing the home game, they, they still haven't gotten over them losing. Who, oh, the South or Trump supporters? Both. This music is so out of place. I'm glad that they're telling us all this instead of showing us. <laughs> Beat this man in four years. That makes about six a year. Dangerous business. This guy was all defund the police 150 years before it was popular. I mean, he's killed, what, 23 people in three years? Modern times, that's a low number. Yeah, he'd still be like a rookie. Yeah, that's like June. <laughs> there we go. Cork. Pull the cork. I still say it's a sex thing. <laughs> I know him. I shot him in the lip last August over at Winding Stair Mountains. He won an Oscar for this? It's still early. They're building up to it. Okay. Well, to begin with, I expect to marry her. She's 13. Back it up. I know. To him, she is a little old. <laughs> <laughs> That's true today. Because in Texas, a senator and a dog are about on par. Yeah. Hey, hey, that's only, insulting only to You would feed a stray dog. <laughs> Funny because I hate politicians. <laughs> 1960s Western music. That's totally a dick joke, too. You know that, right? Huh? What? He's Cockburn. Cogburn. No, it's Cockburn. I don't care what IMDb says, it's Cockburn. I think Cockburn was an STD they had around back then. How do you think he got the name? <laughs> I've got a good lawyer and Jane Noble Daggett. For the last time, there is no Daggett. This was a mistake! Oh god! Oh god! Someone! I, help! Help! No, seriously, why is nobody helping me? I am drowning! <laughs> could be worse, Rooster. Yeah, we could be her. Glub, 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 glub. <laughs> All right, now take you off your pants. Wait, what? You heard me. <laughs> We're going in dry. You said I can't. I paid good cash money to be here, and I'm on my own business. Now we'll have no more talk about it. Well, there's nothing really stopping him from just leaving. She doesn't know the land. Just saying. Tom was going to remake this movie in another 10 years, and it's just going to be Rooster Cockburn leaves them all to go fuck themselves. I was doing... Awesome. Oh, God. And hey, he didn't spill a drop. Tell you what, that's why he's called the Duke. Hey, you shot the Duke. Where are you 
my wounds heal by themselves from inside. That's not how things work. That's not how any of this works. It's painfully obvious he's not on a horse during this right here. I don't like John Wayne because boomers like him and everything boomers like is stupid. Perfect Josh impersonation. It was. So I wanted to clear up something of uh, facts that we got wrong. I listened to our episode the other night and, um, but John Wayne actually didn't have cancer while filming the shootist. He was in remission at the time and oh. believed he had beaten it. And so, um, he had it intended to keep making movies after making the shootist. It was just, the shootist was going to be his last Western. It was supposed to be his goodbye to Westerns, which made sense. Cause at the time the shootist was made, uh, Westerns were dying out, and the only Westerns being made were movies like the Dollars Trilogy and all that, which were spaghetti Westerns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they were deconstructions of the original Western genre. Mm -hmm. So, and John Wayne wanted no part of that. He wanted to make more like uh, gritty detective movies like McHugh and Brannigan. So, I think he was actually going to make a sequel to McHugh and all that. So, yeah, he had, he had intentions of making other movies. Unfortunately, Cancer had a different ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't mind. I mean, yeah. Fuck yeah, Flipcock. <laughs> I love that Flipcock. I don't know why. I'm getting hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching this, and I'm like, holy shit. That's why he won the Oscar. Yeah. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Yes, piss it off. Ow, 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 stop it, stop it, ow, ow. <laughs> I'm just trying to get away from you. No snakes were harmed during the production of this picture. All right, never mind. Grand Theft Auto 1886. That's called Red Dead Redemption, Josh. Also called Grand Theft Auto 1886. That's so incredibly that... dark, considering... We're... Oh, oh, God. God. Damn you oh. for pointing that out. <laughs> God. Tom, edit that out. <laughs> God. Now you have herpes. <laughs> and now... Back to the episode. Yeah, Tom, or, uh, Dan beats that keyboard harder than LaBeef beat Maddie. Jesus Christ. I was even using the silent one. That's the silent one? Yeah, because How like hard? this this is the this is the silent one and this That's my mechanical keyboard. Well, well I'm angry. angry. Well it's you gotta keep so much... mind, uh, the, the silent one is crying every time that Dan types onto it. Stop! Ow, 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 ow! You know what? I think I'm not going to do the summary tonight. I think I'm just going to log out and go to bed. Before you go to bed, can we have a summary, though? Absolutely not. <laughs> All right, here we go. So our movie opens up on a farm, a very picturesque farm, with a gentleman getting ready to leave. His family tells him that he should be taking a train, and he's like, oh, no, it's only 70 miles. It's only a couple days' journey. Before he leaves, his very uh, precocious, mouthy daughter gives him some cash money and gives him a couple of his lucky gold coins. Then he finally leaves after saying goodbye to his family and then it goes to a town and you find out that the coins bring no luck because he's shot by, I think, his farmhand or his hired hand or something like that because he was drunk and he was losing at cards and he said he wanted to go get his money back and then he shot him. So uh, he kills the guy and then the movie cuts to the girl coming into town with the other farmhand and they claim the body of her father and they claim his belongings and she sets to work to try to bring her father's killer to justice and so first she goes to the sheriff and the sheriff says i've got no authority in indian territory uh, you have to talk to the marshal and he gives her a couple names and he tells her that rooster cogburn is the angriest meanest toughest son bitch marshal there is so she uh, asks uh, if he's going to be around he says yes he's coming into town today to bring in prisoners she goes to meet him. He ignores her. She goes to meet him again. He ignores her. She ambushes him in the courthouse. He says a few things and then continues to ignore her again. But she's, you know, persistent. So she follows him to the Chinese grocery that he's living in, in or behind or something. And she has dinner with him. And then she says, uh, I'm going to hire you to go to Indian country to find my dad's killer. I want him to come. And in the meantime, Labeef, played by Glenn Campbell, had shown up. And he's a Texas Ranger, and he offers to help find her dad's killer with Rooster Cogburn because he wants to take him back to Texas because there's a big reward for her dad's killer, Tom Chaney. Uh, they go on the trail of Chaney, and she joins them, much to their chagrin, and they're on a trail 
and they meet up with Dennis Hopper and Dennis Hopper's brother and they end up killing the brother because he chops off Dennis Hopper's fingers because he's about to squeal and tell everybody where they are and then they meet the Ned Pepper gang who is led by Robert Duvall and they try to ambush the Ned Pepper gang but it doesn't quite go as planned so they get back on the trail they're trying to find them they finally get close to the camp but in the morning when she wakes up and goes down to the river to get some water she happens to just run into Chom Cheney and so she shoots him with her dad's hand cannon and he's all stunned that she shot him but she didn't kill him so he gets up and she tries to shoot him again but the gun jams so then he overpowers her and then Ned Pepper's gang shows up and they tell Rooster that he needs to leave and Rooster and Labeef leave or it makes it look like they're leaving but they actually circled around and Labeef rescues Maddie from the camp while Rooster kills Ned Pepper and the rest of his gang including the awesome clucking guy but then Labeef dies but we didn't see him die we only saw him get hit in the head but I guess that was fatal so Rooster Cogburn goes back to the camp but Maddie gets winged by Chaney and she falls into the hole with the rattlesnake she gets bit by a rattlesnake Cogburn climbs down the hole and he saves her but then she says I want my gun and I want my dad's coins and I want all the other stuff and he says the hell with this and just drags her out of the hole and then he takes her all the way back into like that way station or wherever they went and saves her life because she was bitten by a snake and then uh they go back to the farm and she shows him her dad's headstone and he jumps a fence and leaves the end fantastic that was a good summary and i'm 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 sensing a dot 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 there josh it's a good summary for a film. I'm not giving you what you want, Tom. <laughs> uh, and what do I want, Josh? Well, I'm just loving how uh, melancholy Dan is about everything right now. But this was... I mean, yeah, I got nothing This here. was a film. Josh, you're up on final thoughts first. Let's just get yours out of the way. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Dan. Amazing segue, by the way. Brought to you by <laughs> Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, if I don't like your th- your opinion on something, fuck you. Have a have a good day. <laughs> and that's before I've given my opinion. So that being said, that movie was a movie. I wasn't overly impressed with it. It did not meet my expectations. I honestly don't think that uh, that was an Oscar-worthy performance by John Wayne. He was much better than uh what's her face? Kim Darby. She was the weakest link, but that wasn't a very sturdy chain, in my opinion. And this may just be because I'm coming off of watching the remake. I would have to say that I prefer Jeff Bridges' portrayal of Rooster Cogburn more than uh, John Wayne's. I did notice that they filmed a lot of the scenes in this one during the day. And I'm afraid this is going to turn into a compare and contrast, but I've seen both of these movies inside of three days. But like a lot of the stuff was filmed during the day, whereas it was a lot of stuff was during the night in the remake. But if I'm just trying to objectively look at this movie, I don't like Westerns. And I think that that plays pretty heavily into my opinion of this movie. I know I've mentioned it before, how I am apprehensive to watching older films, with few exceptions. I think that mixed with my disinterest in Westerns both kind of mix into this, because I am completely apathetic about this film. If you asked me if I would give this a thumbs up rating or a thumbs down rating, I would just be like, eh. I I wasn't impressed by it. I wasn't impressed by John Wayne. I, I just thought it was a meth film. It, it, that's just by itself. Like, I thought the story was okay. Obviously, I enjoyed the story and the telling of it in the remake. Um, I think I preferred the darker ending of the remake, though. Yeah, I just, I wasn't impressed. It definitely didn't meet my expectations. I was hoping for more out of it. I did like Robert Duvall, though. I thought his uh, portrayal of, uh, what was his name, Ned something? Ned Pepper. Ned Pepper. I really liked his Ned Pepper. I, I, I would have to say, if anything... Robert Duvall stood out in this film. Beyond that, just, yeah. That's all I've got initially, but I may have to defend myself when Dan goes next. Dan, that's how you do a segue. Not, all right, Dan, what's your opinion? All right. (laughs) Fuck you, Josh. Anyways. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) I hadn't seen this movie in a while, um, and I had seen the remake recently within the last uh, few months i will have to say i thought some of the scenes in the remake were a little more tense than they were in this one especially the original showdown with ned pepper's gang at the one house i thought labeef 
was more of a sidekick in this movie, whereas um, in the remake, he's kind of a foil or an equal. And so uh, I don't know which Labeef I like better. I got to digest that a little bit. But um, they both were different. One thing I will appreciate, this this one actually made me appreciate the remake a little bit more in that the remake is a co- almost a completely different movie. It has the same general plot and some of the same beats, but the characters are portrayed a little bit differently, which I respect that. But we're not, we didn't watch the remake tonight. We watched this one. And I will say that this movie is still one of my favorites. I still love it, but there's parts of it I'm, I, I'd forgotten that I didn't like. Like, it's kind of hokey in some spots, like especially when it's just like them riding around in big country with the trumpety Western type music playing. That's almost sounds like it's the opening credits to a Bonanza TV show. I'm like, okay, like we get it, get to the point. And I will say that I like it when it finally gets going, but it takes almost an hour to get going. And I forgot how much it dragged in the beginning, even after they've introduced Rooster Cogburn. That's just, dragging and dragging and dragging you're like okay when are we going to get on the trail to go find ned pepper or tom cheney so that's that part i forgot how much i didn't like that but i loved john wayne's performance in this movie i think it was oscar worthy but i don't think it was better than movies he didn't win oscars for which is weird but those are my initial final thoughts what about you tom oh Honestly, I agree and disagree with you on this one and agree and disagree with you, Josh, on some parts. Way to ride the fence on that one. I, you know, if I learned anything from our Whistle Stop campaign trail, it's how to play politics. <laughs> Honestly, though, um, I kind of wish I hadn't seen the remake of True Grip before I saw this one because it is unfair to compare the two. This was made in an entirely different time with an entirely different directorial style and technology, too. I mean, all the things that they did with True Grip, the remake, all the night shots and everything else, we can do what they only wish they could have done back then. But I can't not compare them because, well, it's, what can you do? But I will say this, this was not a bad film. For its time, it was a good film. Uh, The characters were likable and enjoyable. Even the bad guys, for what they were, weren't evil, like, black hat, cackling villain villains. (laughs) Uh, What was the uh, one character's name? Um... I keep on calling uh, yeah, Chaney, Chaney. He wasn't evil. He was laughably dumb. Him, him just being like, oh, why is this happening to me? That was great. Ned Pepper, as we noted, he wasn't bad, bad. John Wayne wasn't good, good either. This was almost a subversion of Westerns from that time frame. <laughs> it's like the good guy wasn't all good. The bad guys weren't all bad. You related to both sides you hated both sides you like both sides so i appreciate that it definitely wasn't uh, the searchers but then again even the searchers was still a lot of that older western these people are bad these people are good directing was fine it was good for what it was at the time but we're spoiled now john wayne's acting though i said it in the beginning part i was looking forward to seeing the performance john wayne gave that beat John Voight and Dustin Hoffman. And I'm watching this like, really? He beat Voight and Hoffman? Midnight Cowboys lost to this? I mean, he's good. I mean, as far as him being John Wayne in a John Wayne film, I enjoyed that, but no way did was he better than Voight and Hoffman. My apologies if I piss off the internet in saying that, but no. I think no, that's he- my job tonight, Tom. You're correct, Josh. My apologies for stealing your thunder. Let me turn the hate back on you. You were right when we were watching this, Josh. They did give him this Oscar because, well, they had to. It was. We need to give John Wayne an Oscar. What movie was he in this year? All right, give him the best actor for that one. Yeah, it's a slow year. It's 1970. It's not much else. There's only, you know, midnight fucking cowboy. Which, uh, incidentally, both Dustin Hoffman and uh, John Voight were both nominated for Best Actor. So yes. they took up 40% of the nominations for Best Actor. But it did end up winning Best Picture. 
Yes, it did. And it deserved that, at least for that year. But in terms of John Wayne's performances, I like this. This was fun. I can see why Rooster Cogburn, the character, is still kind of iconic. Why when people think John Wayne, they think Rooster Cogburn. It was such a good character. He was likable. He wasn't overwhelmingly asshole. John Wayne went outside his normal comfort zone with it for Mm -hmm. John Wayne. So that's my thoughts on it. I like the film. It wasn't a great film, but, you know, for what it was, it was enjoyable. And, you know, I wonder if half of my thoughts on the film could be that it's only my second John Wayne film. I don't have any other experience with John Wayne prior to the shootist and this one. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what I'm comparing it to. These are the well, only two John Wayne performances outside of clips I've seen on the Internet. Well, I was saying I do believe he gave an Oscar worthy performance in this film. I'm just surprised that this is the one he won the Oscar for because he's given Oscar worthy performances in other movies but he was either not even nominated or he didn't win. And I'm legitimately shocked that this is the one that won. And I think that this was a good performance. Like Tom said, yeah, he's still playing John Wayne, but he he is portraying him a little bit differently. Like Rooster Cogburn's a little bit differently than how he portrays like his, his other roles. Like if you want like a stereotypical John Wayne kind of role, look at McClintock or um, maybe uh, El Dorado. Like that's where he's playing like, you know, the, the suede back cowboy sheriff of the town like that's Mm -hmm. that's john wayne that was prototypical this one he did step a little bit outside of his box and play a character who's still rough and gruff but you know definitely has like a lot of flaws i but i like i said i think this was an oscar worthy performance i'm just genuinely shocked that this was the movie that won him the oscar see coming off of only knowing john wayne off of the stereotype and the parodies you know basically hearing about him through hearsay and other type stuff Nothing in this movie felt different than anything I've heard of John Wayne. Like, I I agree with Tom. It's like, I don't think that that was an Oscar-worthy performance. Well, and that's fair, but you got to remember, like, if you're thinking that this movie, like, you you don't have any experience watching John Wayne films except for the two that we watched in the last two weeks. But I do have experience watching good acting, and I didn't think I saw that in this film. Fair point. I was going to say... Um, you don't have any experience watching John Wayne except for the two movies that we've watched. And you're talking about how you watch this performance and this is a stereotypical John Wayne performance. Of course it is in your eyes. This is one of his most iconic roles is Rooster Cogburn. It would be like somebody watching... Uh, I can't think of a of an iconic role that somebody else played that will be remembered 50 years down the line. But Rambo. Somebody often parodied. Yeah, Rambo, Darth Vader. It's like if you never watched Star Wars but you've only seen all the parodies from it or just not even that, like a character, like who's, who's an actor like, uh, so best, uh, Morgan uh, Woody Freeman. Allen. Oh, even better. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Like Josh. You see Mor- Morgan Freeman is being constantly parodied. And then you go into a, a movie, like even Shawshank Redemption, only knowing Morgan Freeman parodies, you're going to see where all of those stereotypical Morgan Freeman impressions come from. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> but I would even say that even if you go into, uh, that or Shawshank Redemption, Morgan Freeman still delivers a good performance. Mm-hmm. I didn't see a good performance in this one. I saw an okay performance. I mean, it's like Tom said when we were watching it. He was having fun delivering his lines, and I don't disagree with that. You know, I'm not a professional critic, but you know, when I see in a performance done, I'm like, that was really good. And I'll, typically, I would say that uh, it's well-received, or mm-hmm. I, mo- a majority of people would agree with me in that regard. But it's like, I see this one, and I'm just like... It felt like somebody was just doing an impression of John Wayne in this. But right. that was John Wayne. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, much like Morgan Freeman or Sylvester Stallone in them, do you really want to see John Wayne try to be posh and British or anything else? No, you want to see John Wayne in a John Wayne film. Uh, Bruce Willis is an example, too. I mean, Bruce Willis is always Bruce Willis in a Bruce Willis film. Just some films, he's more Bruce Willis than others. So I think this is that same level. In this one, he was John Wayne, but man, was he John Wayne. Yeah, I will probably never watch this movie again, but I will definitely watch the remake again. I enjoyed the remake, but mm-hmm. I just nothing about this one that stood out to me. And again, that may be my bias against uh, Westerns and against the older 
films, but I don't think it's really that. I mean, there was the the remake. The Coen Brothers brought it. The whoever played oh, dude, Maddie, yeah. I can't remember her name, but Haley Steinfeld. But, I said while we were watching it, I wasn't going to throw too much shade on Kim Darby and her performance because she was good. Her performance was good for the role at that time for this movie. But holy shit, com- contrast her against yeah the remake one. Dear God, unfair. I stand by what I said at the beginning. She's fine in the beginning until the other good actors start to come into the frames. Because like Haley Stanfield was fine in the beginning of that movie. And then when Matt Damon and when... Um, not not John Wayne. Uh, I almost said Matt Damon and John Wayne. That would have been a cool movie. No, Matt right? Damon and yeah, Matt Damon and Jeff Bridges. She's able to hold her own against those very well accomplished actors. Whereas the girl yeah, in the, the, the problem, original, like, Kim Darby, Darby gets Darby? buried. Yeah. In, uh, yes, with, I agree. As soon as Robert Duvall came on screen, but that was so late into the movie. Yeah, when she's uh, when Kim Darby and um, um, that was supposed John... to be a joke, Tom. Yeah, I got it. I just did, chose not to respond to it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I I'm not gonna say yeah, anything nice not... about John Wayne ever again. <laughs> well, let's say some nice things about this film. I mean, are there things in this film that were better than in the remake? Since we did wind up being compare contrast, even though we said we were gonna try not to be. Or at least I said it. I definitely compared and contrasted the first part of my final thoughts, but things I liked about this movie. Yeah, you think that it did better than maybe the remake did. Uh, I, I'm actually trying to think. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I to see exactly. like because they they are different though. There's scenes that I enjoyed in this movie and scenes I enjoyed in the remake, but for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Um, I don't know. It's really hard for me to say which scene in this I like better than a scene in the remake. Mm-hmm. Other than maybe I actually liked the scene where he's talking to Maddie on the hilltop before the Ned Peppers gang showed up. I actually liked it a little bit better in this movie than in the remake. Because in this one, it sounded like Rooster was kind of warming up to her finally and opening up to her and kind of just being laid back with her. And in the remake, he's still being gruff and drunk Rooster and being very dismissive of her when she kind of questions him about the robbery and all that stuff. And she's like, will you rob that bank? And he kind of snaps at her. Whereas she says the same thing in this movie where she's like, will you rob that bank? But instead of snapping at her, he just kind of explains his twisted logic, Mm -hmm, you know? Like, well, I never stole a man's watch, meaning I've never robbed a person personally. I robbed a bank. That one is insured. Like, that's how he's trying to explain it. So I kind of like that scene a little bit better in this one, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, what about you, Josh? Anything, I mean... I, don't, I like some of the... I would have to say, on the surface, no. I think I prefer the entirety of the remake to the original. But mm-hmm. there was a few things in the original that I kind of liked that was done differently. Like, mm-hmm. the very beginning, the exposition with the dad and uh, Tom Chaney. I kind of like that, like how we got to see a little bit more in on that. But in terms of pretty much any scene with Maddie, I preferred with Haley Steinfeld, with Mm -hmm. Maddie Ross. Yeah, I preferred pretty much every scene with her. I kind of like the uh, characterization that Matt Damon brought to the character of LaBeef more than I liked, um, what's his name? Glenn Glenn Campbell. Campbell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the only one that I think I preferred was Robert Duvall. I thought that I really liked his uh, Ned Pepper. I thought he did a really good job. And maybe I could even go so far as to say maybe the portrayal of Tom Chaney. I think I might. I, uh, it's one of those things. I might have to sleep on it. Mm-hmm. But uh, compared to Josh Brolin, because Josh Brolin played Tom Chaney in the remake. That's right, he did. If I was to compare them, I'd have to say, I, I don't know, it was Jeff Corey's the one who did it in uh, the original. I kind of liked his portrayal of Tom Chaney. I don't know if I like it better or worse. Mm-hmm. But... Those would be the only two, three things that I would say Mm -hmm. about that. What about you, Tom? Overall, I think I need to watch the remake again because I didn't think the snake pit scene in the remake was as tense or perilous as it was in this. But because I think he just fell down like a steep incline and then got bit and kind of seemed a little more anticlimactic in the remake versus in this one where she fell down a pretty damn far hill or hole, excuse me. And the the way that was shot was claustrophobic and tense the way it should have been. So my my opinion on that one, I thought uh, they did it better, but I'd have to rewatch the remake to, you know, having just watched it. 
I would say that um, the cave was bigger, so I'll give you that regard. I think that this one felt a little bit more claustrophobic, but she was suspended basically upside down in the remake, and it was a lot darker. Oh, uh, okay. Like in this one, it was a very well-lit cavern. In the remake, she pulls out what she thinks is a gun, and it looks like a gun, but it's on a corpse of a guy, so she pulls the corpse out. She tries to reach for it. It's something like, it's not a gun. It's like a belt clip or something. And then you see a nest of uh, rattlesnakes inside the chest cavity of this corpse. And they're all crawling around her. And uh, then Rooster kind of just starts rappelling down. I would say that the remake was a lot more tense and a lot more creepy. I was a lot more creeped out on that one. All right. Well, I guess well, I need to rewatch the remake for that scene. So I may wind up recanting on my opinion. But overall, the ending, I kind of like better in this one just because it does have the optimistic happy ending where john wayne rides off into the sunset she got what she wanted although really no one got what they wanted they they never did get cheney alive or duvall's character alive they kind of failed in their mission completely i just noticed <laughs> just a second ago it's like they never did get anyone alive huh they kind of failed that's another subversion in the Western trope. They well, did, they did get the reward for Tom Chaney. They did get the reward. But well, I like the At least in the, uh, the original. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. But I, get, I like the happy note it went out on, as opposed to the ending of the remake, where it's like, you know, I lost my arm. Yes, yeah, she lost her arm in the remake. She which did. is Which is closer to how the book was, or I, I, completely how the book was. I don't know. I've never read the book. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I saw Rooster eventually later on. He was with a traveling show. He was drunk and fat, and then he died of, like, whatever. And that's life. The end. Well, no, he died before she could see him. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and this one, he at least got to see her off and, like, say, you, you got a place here in, in my graveyard when you die. Like, oh, okay, then. Thank you for that. <laughs> and Yeah, the remake's a lot more morose ending, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to disagree with either of you guys. I like this film. It was an enjoyable film. It was an entertaining film. Was it a legendary film? I don't think so. But again, we're yeah, comparing it against now. And, you know, honestly, this is half the reason I wanted to watch the remake. Because I've seen so many originals before watching the remake. Like, I honestly think, totally objectively, I would have the similar feeling about this one without having seen the remake like i just felt like it, especially what dan said like the first half is incredibly boring yeah but those are those films of those times I yeah mean, even like war films it starts off slow and then mm -hmm. you get to the yeah that, like i said i don't try, i try not to harp on it too much because movies are made differently now than they, they are back then, they are you know and like you know like this one opened up with the farm and the, the credits and the, the kind of i called it little house on the prairie type music that was kind of like I think Josh, you were the one that said it at the beginning. This music feels out of place, I and mean, it does. Yeah, it does. It just it was like I don't know. It was like opening up a horror movie with like a song that sounds like it belongs in the an eighty sitcom. You know, it was like it just doesn't make any sense. This the song is not <laughs> fitting what the theme of this movie is going to be because even though this movie is not as dark as the remake, it's still kind of a dark film. Oh yeah. Um, like I said, Rooster Coburn's not exactly a good guy. LaBeef's not exactly a good guy. Yes, he's a Texas Ranger, so by default, he's the good guy, but he still, like, comes off as kind of a womanizer, as kind of a dick, you know? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it, so this movie's still really dark. So I try not to harp on it too much, because, like I said, movies were made differently back then than they are today, and they made differently 20 years ago. You know, that's the thing about movies, they evolve. But, um... I liked the way the remake introduced the characters a little bit better. That's just me. Like I said, this this one took a long time to get going. Um, once it got going, though, I, I loved it. But, yeah. Uh, would you guys recommend this film to anyone else? No. If you're a fan of Westerns, yes. If you're not a fan of Westerns, case in point with Josh, this one's not going to be the one that turns you on to him. And I'm of the same opinion. It's, it's a good thing to look at just to see what older films were like, especially mm. yes. John Wayne. But it's not going to wow you. If you've seen the remake of True Grit, yeah, probably aren't going to be. Yeah, yeah it's not if, your opinions. I mean, if someone told me that, you know, they want to watch a John Wayne film or they want to see, you know, like, oh, 
you know, wonder what John Wayne's all about. What five movies would you recommend? This would be in one of the five. Like mm-hmm. I would, if, if I say, okay, if you really want to watch John Wayne, this is one of the five movies you need to see. Um, but like I said, if you're not a fan of Westerns, if you don't think you're going to be a fan of John Wayne, if you don't think you're going to be a fan of that kind of movie, then this one's not going to be the one that changes your mind. It's just mm-hmm. not. Yeah. Like maybe my two John Wayne introductions were poor. But yeah, I just, I definitely wasn't a fan of this film. Although I do want to comment on how infrequently the three of us have such different views of a film. So this is one of those very rare films where I didn't like it, Dan liked it, and Tom was middle of the road. Normally it's, and I can say this about like 90% of the films we watch with a a high level of confidence, that typically it's me and Dan like it, Tom hates it. (laughs) <laughs> that's generally the way things go i appreciate the film for what it was uh, but let's not kid ourselves the remake that's my go-to if i had to choose not to disparage this one but yeah, yeah. i would <laughs> recommend the remake absolutely yeah. yes. also like you gotta remember you know we're also in this age where we're alive after both spaghetti westerns and then later on westerns in the 90s kind of um turned the tropes on their ear and made westerns a lot more dirty a lot more gritty a lot more dark and the this one was still made in that 1960s style of westerns when they were still in their their height so that's that's all yeah i could see somebody growing up with movies like this loving this film and thinking it's the best thing it's like i don't look down on that opinion if you like this type of film hey more power to you i don't (laughs) yeah but we won't hold that too much against you, Josh. You John Wayne hating SOB. I'll hold it against him. Well, I think I've hit all my notes, guys. What about you? I think I've said what I can say about this movie without I repeating could go myself. On for some more time, but uh, I won't. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'd give Dan a heart attack or something because he's already fuming. <laughs> he's about to storm into your house with a with a shotgun. He's about ready to pop. <laughs> Fill your hands, you son of a bitch. Boosh. Let the hate flow through. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you all for listening, as always. And as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. Our regular episodes can be found Tuesdays at 6 p.m., Please like and subscribe on whatever medium you choose. We really appreciate it as it helps us keep those fire pits burning. And be sure to join our Discord as well. The link for the Discord is in our episode's description (gasps) on our site at firepit.podbean.com. You'll get notifications for new episodes and even better or worse, uh, you can chat with us and other listeners. It's a fun time and you can argue with us and you can tell everybody why you agree with Josh that John Wayne's a horrible actor and totally overrated and everyone should hate him. And you could agree with me that, you know, John Wayne's a treasure and, you know, you should love him unconditionally as a big teddy bear. Join the Discord and side with one of us or both of us or none of us and tell us we're both full of crap. But join us. Or you could tell Dan how that analogy was kind of weird. But our email is mentioned in the interspersal <laughs> segment. So if you want to send us a long message, a short message, a happy message, or a sad message, it's up to you. Also, like our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter. Both are linked in this episode's description as well. And how speaking was it weird. <laughs> it was weird in the way that Labeef was speaking to Maddie. No, I was just saying. No, that, that I wanted to plan a kiss on you. Then I wanted to you over my knee. I was saying, I was that saying, was join weird. the disc. I was saying, join the Discord to either agree with Josh or join the Discord to either agree with me or and join then the you Discord. You went to- on to undress John Wayne with your voice, and then you could take John Wayne and unbutton his thing. Well, it's better you than you throwing chest. him in the goddamn fire. Before they actually do come to shooting terms, I want to give a special shout out to some of our new Facebook followers: uh, Omar, Ash, Brianna. We also have Devante, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name, and Todd, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. I'm abstaining from last names because, you know, I'm not sure if you want us sharing those out with the internet, but I, we just want to thank you for popping in and joining us by the fire. We've been keeping it warm for you, and especially the rest of you who have joined the Facebook page as well. And there is a lot of you. And I promise that I will try to get to all of you at some point. Just 
few at a time. But thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll, as always, give a special shout out to Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. Also, a special shout out to my wife, who is not very much not listening to any episode unless I force her to, but is still very supportive of this podcast and puts up with a lot of crap that we have to do to juggle around to uh, get it done. And one more shout out to all of our new Facebook friends. I hope you're listening and I hope you're enjoying the show. And I, too, would like to give a shout out to my wife. She doesn't listen to the show either, but her excuse is that she's listened to the live show for years and she's tired of it. So she doesn't listen to us on her own time. And also, special shout out to our Discord uh, members. I know you have other names, but these are the ones that you have on our Discord. You know, Danielle, Rob, I don't know that guy. And uh, Tyrick Thorne. And I don't know this Tucker person. And uh, Sierra Doric. I pronounced that wrong. I know I did. But uh, hey, shout out to you guys. And thank you for partaking in the conversations on Discord. Well done, as always, team. So... Nigel, where are we racing off to next? Well, Tom, we are taking Robert Duvall from this movie, and we are moving him to 1990s Days of Thunder. Sounds fun. Can't wait to drive off to that film. That was a terrible line. <laughs> I did not write this. I did. I did. And you shouldn't have besmirched John Wayne. I might have actually gave a damn when I wrote the lines. <laughs> well, until then, I've been Josh. I've been Dan. And I've been Tom. <laughs> Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. <laughs> Good luck out there. <laughs>